Hey everybody, it's Katie Chu here and today I'm going to use these two drawings to show you guys how I color skin. As a disclaimer, I always like to say that I am by no means saying that this is the only way to color skin and this is just my personal preference of technique that works better with my style and my personal illustration choices and this is just me showing you guys how I personally do it and you guys can choose to work with that or not. So if you're ready, let's go! Okay, so we have this drawing here of Mugi from Kayon. I already have most of the drawing shaded, but I'm going to show you guys how I am doing the skin right now. So the first thing I would like to show you guys is that I use for white skin, I use a very very light base color because I really enjoy going overboard with the shading. So if I'm going with very light skin and I already pick a slightly darker color, it may look a little too much when I shade it. So to avoid the skin looking ashy, we should try to go with a more saturated shading. So if her regular skin tone is more on the yellowish side, I'm going to go with a more orangey tone for the first part of the shading. Now we can see that her hair is covering some part of her face and if we're going with the regular light source as in the light source is going from right in front of her, I can add the shading right under the hair strands like this. This will help produce the sensation of depth between her hair and her face. I am also going to color her entire neck because it's on the shadow of her head. So this is the first part of the shading on her head. I'm going to also shade her hands and her legs. I cannot tell you guys exactly where to put the shadows, it really depends on what sort of outfit your character is wearing, what sort of light source you're going for, how harsh do you want your shadows to look. So this is the sort of advice I don't think I can give you. I'm just going to show you a little bit of the technique I use to shade, not exactly where to put the shading. So now that I have the base shading, I'm going to add a second layer of shading. I'm going to click on protect alpha or lock or preserve opacity. It really depends on what sort of software you're going to use for drawing but this basically means that I'm not going to be able to color outside the layer I just used. Now I can pick my second shading color. The second shading color can have a little bit more of diversity. I can go with a darker orange, such as this one, for example. I can go with red, which is the color I adore using when I'm doing the second shading, so like a reddish pink. I can go with like bright pink, and I can also go with purple. All of these will create a different effect based on what you want. So the purple one, for example, is going to give you a more, a cooler effect with the shading, which I think is really cool, but it really depends on the color scheme you're working with. This is an example of how the purple can look in a drawing. I think it looks really interesting. The dark orange is basically a darker version of the color you use for the first shading. It doesn't look as colorful and interesting, but it looks super natural when you use it. The reddish pink is a way of using a more colorful tone without losing the natural vibe. So it's not going to look super neon, but it's still more colorful than just using orange. Last but not least, the bright pink. The bright pink works super well if you're going with a more mesmerizing effect. I really, really enjoy using it and I think it gives a really, really cool vibe. So these are the colors I use the most. Of course, you can play with different colors, but these are the ones that I use the most. Now, why do I have to have a second shading? 
The second shading is usually just to give a little bit more depth to your shading because I usually do the primary shading in a lighter color that is just going to show kind of where the shadows are going to be. But the second part of the shading is really to show where the really, really dark parts are. So I usually just go closer to where the shadows are coming from. For example, here or here, which is where her chin is making a shadow or here that is close to the sleeve. This is what I usually work with when I'm talking about the second shading. I'm going to pick for this drawing the reddish tone. I think it's my favorite one. And I'm going to start doing the second shading for the rest of this drawing. Now, I can leave these shadows like this if I want to. When I do really, really harsh shadows and like full of contrast, it's, it's usually a technique called cell shading. So when I do cell shading, I leave really, really rough edges and it's a style I really enjoy doing, so I recommend it to you guys. But if I want to do softer shading, this is what I do. I'm going to get the, the color picking thingy and I'm going to click on the color that I use for the first shading. Now I'm going to go and pick an airbrush and use it on a smaller side. Size, sorry. Now I'm going to go on where I use the second shading and I'm going to make the edges of this shading look a little bit less rough. To make the second part of the shading more natural. Now, I'm going to click on the base skin color and I'm going to do the exact same thing, but on the first part of the shading. I usually recommend you do this to larger shadows because if you do it to really, really small shadows, it, there's a possibility they're just going to disappear under the whole softness thing. So you can tell it looks softer when I do that. Now, you still probably think the skin is looking a little bare. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to create a new layer and put it on multiply mode. Now, I usually just pick the color I used for the first shading, get a larger airbrush, and apply it to the places where I think the shadows are going to be. So, under her hair, right here where her hair is touching her face, here where the sleeve is, and here too, and here on her legs, close to where her skirt is and where one leg is shadowing the other. Now you can already see a little bit more depth to the shading. I would not recommend going too overboard with the airbrush because I think it may look a little bit artificial, but I also think it's really interesting to use it to give a little bit more depth to your shading. Now, for the last thing I usually do for shading, I'm going to grab a reddish color, also put a layer on multiply mode, and add a little bit of blush to these cheeks. I also like to add a little bit of red to the hands and a little bit to the thigh. Oh, of course, let's not forget the nose. For even more blush, Sometimes I pick an even darker reddish color, use the airbrush on a smaller size, and add a little bit more blush close to the eyes, like this. Now, last but not least, the highlights. I usually just pick white, regular pen, and add a little bit of glow around the cheeks, on the nose, just like this, to show you where the light is coming from to make her thighs look beautiful. So this is basically how the skin is going to look in the end. There's also another technique that I really like to use that I think makes the drawing really interesting and the transition between her skin and her clothes to look a little bit more natural. So yeah, here is the skirt. I'm going to create a new layer clipped to the skirt and I'm going to get like the reddish or the orangey color and I'm going to use airbrush and this color around where the skirt is touching the skin. Can you see how this makes the skin look a lot more glowy? I'm going to do that to every single piece of clothing that is touching her skin, like her socks, 
like her blazer too. It's really discreet, but it almost looks like her skin is glowing. If she's got dark hair, perhaps even the light hair, but if she's got darker hair, it looks even better. But with the light hair, you can also do this to make the transition look a little bit more natural. So these are basically all of my tips for the skin. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the darker skin that I have on drawing that I'm going to use as an example for you guys, because I think the color theory works slightly differently. So I'm going to use this drawing of Nessa just to show you guys a little bit of how I work with dark skin. So for example, you can see that her base color is this light brown here. Now to avoid it looking ashy, you're not going to get a dark brown just like this. It's not going to look interesting, it's not going to look like a healthy skin tone. So I usually go with a reddish or orangey brown, like this one. You can tell that it looks a lot, lot better than this just regular darker brown. For the second shading, I usually don't play as much, but I think it's just because I'm not as used to drawing darker skin. I think it's important to experiment, but I would rather go with my safer options for now. Now for the airbrush part, I do exactly the same thing as I do with lighter skin. And now for the blush, in this case, I usually go with a darker red. If I go with light red in this case, you're going to see how this is going to look. It is going to look weird and unnatural. So if you choose a darker red, less saturated, it's going to look a lot more natural. So go with less saturated red and a little bit darker. Now for the highlights, do not use white. You can use white if you want, but then you can just lower the opacity, but it's not going to look as natural. For the highlights, I think the most, the safer option is to go with light brown or light red, which is going to look a lot more natural than just white. So in this case, the color I went with for the highlights is sort of like this. So all of these are inside the same color scheme. And it's really important that you understand how these color schemes work instead of just going with darker versions of the colors you would use for white skin. You can also do the same thing as I did on the previous drawing and use her using her skin color to shade around her clothes and around her hair to make the transition look more natural. It's really your choice and I think it looks super interesting in this case as well. So this is the end of my tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's not as detailed as it could be, but I'm still working on it. I hope you guys learned a little bit from it anyway. And thank you so much for staying until the end of this video. And I'm going to see you guys next week. Bye.